Okay, well there's a couple of ways you can get this fluid out. You could use a turkey baster. See people do that. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use my nifty pump. Hold on. Things are getting crazy here. So I just stick that down in there. And it's not working. There we go. Looks like a charm. See the fluids, fluids filling. Man, that's awfully dirty. I just changed it all. Stop right there. I just didn't have the... That's working pretty good. Wow. It's pretty nasty. Okay, so it's a change of plans. I was originally gonna just change the the uh, reservoir here on the master cylinder. The old one was all yellow, and I was afraid it was gonna crack. But this is the one I got. And oh, it's on the bench. I can't get it up. There's no electrical connection on it. I didn't notice until I got this one all the way off. So. I was going to make that video, but then realized that they got the wrong part. It doesn't work on here. There's no electrical connection for this sensor. Where is it? Sensor right here. Plug into. So I tried to order another, another reservoir, but they don't have it with the connection. So I had to order a whole master cylinder, which I have on the bench right now and I am bleeding it. <clears throat> I guess I should show how, how that's done. But I gotta take this wrong one and go drop that off. But this is what I got. It's a, it's a doorman. Ordered it on Amazon, of course. It's the part number right there, M630034, for my 2000 Chevy S10 ZR2. It has the electrical electrical connection. It's a little cold out here. It's kind of hard to talk. But that's it, and I'll put that in the link, or in the description. I'll put the link in the description. So anyway, the new one is on the bench. I'm bleeding that. I'll show that in a second, but I got to take these lines off. Oh my god. Hopefully I don't strip them. You should have a, a line wrench. I think I'm tightening it. There, that's loosening. That one came loose. Oh, thank god. You gotta be careful with these lines because they can, can tend to strip these if you don't have a, a line wrench that goes more all the way around. It's kind of like a box in, but it's got a little cutout to go over the line. So you want to take these off. Hopefully I don't get any air in here. I really don't feel like taking the wheels off and all that stuff and bleeding. Okay, so 
there's that one which I just got air in there so looks like I'm gonna probably have to bleed this which really stinks because you get air in the ABS here and it's no bueno no good for you non-Spanish speaking people out there. But what I did before, I, had, I changed out all the fluid in the system and of course I ran it low. I was working by myself and I got air in the ABS. I'm supposed to use a scan tool and it energizes the servos, gets all the air out. I don't have one of those scanners. So what I did is I jacked it up, took all the tires off, put lug nuts back on the brake rotors to hold them, and had it up in the air, started it, put it in gear, uh, let it idle, and then hit the brakes. That tricked it into thinking that the brakes, um, the car was sliding, and it activated the ABS module and pushed all the air out. Worked like a charm. I'm not telling you to do that. I'm just saying that's what I did. And if you don't know what the hell you're doing, don't do that. So now those are off. I gotta get those. I don't know if they're metric. Yes, they appear to be metric. It's like they're a 15. on there very good. Mm, don't like that. I'm gonna go get an open-end wrench. So I couldn't get that socket on there so I got this ratcheting box in. Oh, I guess I could hold on. Hold the presses. This came with plugs which I could use this part will be edited out it's going to have graphics all kinds of stuff you guys are going to love it It'll be high high value high production so they gave me these little pluggies to screw in here. Which if I didn't take off the, the reservoir would have been great. So I wouldn't have got any fluid anywhere, but you can see it's a little late for that. Do have some towels down here to catch most of what drips. A little bit ahead. And I did take off the uh, vacuum for the brake booster. Hopefully, I remember to put that back on. I'm sure I'll figure it out when it doesn't run very good. And I will speed through this part. Very boring. I always say that and I never do. You guys want to watch every detail, don't you? I'm watch this wrench go back and forth hypnotically. You're feeling very sleepy, very tired. You will subscribe to my channel. You will like every video. You will donate to my Patreon, even though I don't have one. Someday, I don't know. I don't even know how to set that up. There we go. Finished. And you just pull that sucker out, being careful not to drip this. It's pretty interesting in there. 
don't want to get this brake fluid on anything. It's very bad. Okay, so here's the bench bleeding here. I got the master cylinder in a vise. And forget all this crap in the background. But that's, uh, see it's mounted in the vise right there. And then you got this kit. Be careful about turning it over. It's a Dorman 139. One, one and it's got most of the fittings for most cars that you'd need make sure that you look up the fittings on your master cylinder and make sure they have the right because I've seen people say they only had one fitting that fit mine are both quarter by 20 uh, threads so it had two of them right there and you put lines uh, back in there and all you do is you just take a screwdriver or something on the plunger here and just push in like so and you're trying to get all the air once the air bubbles stop coming out of the fluid then you're good but I think I got air in mine because I had to take the lines off so I mean there's a little fluid I don't know. Hopefully I can get away. There probably is a little air in there now, but we'll see. So I will finish bleeding that master cylinder and get it on, and I will come back. So I forgot to mention, too, that another way, if you don't have a bench or a vise, that, um, forgive my sniffles, it's kind of cold out here, that if you don't have a bench or a vise, you can just put it back on the car and hook up these. Um, fittings in the hoses and just go inside and pump the pedal. So I got the lines off off camera. If you want to, it's already dripping, you can see it dripping out of there. Careful not to strip these out. It's probably tight enough. That's still dripping though. That's why it's important to have a, a towel underneath there. Catch all this stuff. It's very corrosive stuff. Don't get the paint off of anything. So I changed my gloves too because I had brake fluid all over them. But it looks like it's topped up. Still, I didn't lose that much fluid. I hope I don't have to bleed the hole because I have to take all the tires off. I got a vacuum bleeder, but still pain in the you know what. I'm sure there's some air in there. Try to get my gloves on. So, where's the cap? So I got everything tightened up. The bolts to the vacuum reservoir are these are tightened up. So I'm gonna hook all this other stuff back up, which is this brake booster line. There we go. This sensor here, which is the reason why the other one wasn't the right one. Come on, go in there. Oh, don't tell me these pins are bent in there. Oh, 
there we go. So that's in. Now I gotta put the air cleaner. I put this paper towel in there to keep stuff from falling in. And I also just connected this stuff here. So let me get that. So then this just goes back on here. that's connected it should be it hopefully cross fingers that I didn't get too much air and it's all spongy but I kind of think I did so it looks like I may be jacking it up I'll let you know let me just explain what I'm doing here my little vacuum pump here that I used to the brakes broke. It's not working. Let me verify that. Nope. So, so much for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this part to gravity uh, bleed. So I'm just going to stick this on here. I'll get that. And put this on here. Come on. There we go. And you just crack that open a little bit and hopefully it doesn't fall off try to set this up here see it just all the fluid came out and there it goes it's gonna go down here I've got the cap off the reservoir up there so that looks okay to me so I'm just gonna tighten it There's other ways to do this, I know, but that's the way I'm doing it because I really don't want to do it in a... That was at the farthest. Oh, I forgot my light over there. Shoot. <laughs> oh well. You guys can see this without the light. So here's the bleeder on this side. Right here. Put this tube on here. Over it, crack it open. Just let it come out of there. Oh no, it's dripping all over the place. 
kind of defeats the whole purpose of it there. Made a mess. As you can see, it's working pretty well. It just comes out of there. Gravity is pushing it through. It's a pretty good way to do it by yourself. It takes a little bit more time, but it's my vacuum pump broke. I don't have a choice. So go ahead and tighten that. And keep this lower when you take it off. Take it off and then let it run down that cup. You just work your way from the furthest wheel to the closest. And I got it all over the ground. This one you can probably see pretty good because Gravity should be pushing. There you can see it. It's kind of crazy, actually. And you want to check the master cylinder. Make sure you still got fluid in there. You don't want to run that low. That would be the worst scenario. comes and it does, doesn't appear to be any air in it so it looks pretty good it's pretty clear too a little bit of junk in the beginning there so I'm pretty happy with that close it off and that's it that's how you gravity bleed so after you've done all that you just top this off to where it says max and close that you put your cap back on and you should be ready to go. Okay, just to recap. This is what they call the outro here, I guess. I started off replacing this reservoir at the wrong part. So I had to order a whole new master cylinder, which I didn't really need, but replaced it anyway. So then I had to go and bleed all the brakes because I had to take the brake lines off down there. So I got all that done. I did most of it off camera. You guys don't really care to see people take wheels and tires off. I'm sure that's been done. So I had to take all my tires and wheels off and bleed the brakes and make sure there's no air in the ABS module over here. So that's all done, and I'm about to go drive it and make sure it's, uh, it stops. Hopefully it does, because I don't want to bleed it again. So that's it for this one. Um, I got some more stuff coming up, hopefully more exciting. I didn't really mean to do this, but I thought I'd make a video of it anyway, if anybody wanted to know how to change the master cylinder on a truck. 
So that's it for this one, and I will see you next time.